Making videos on my childhood video game has been amazing, but many of you watching right now have been deceived. While I seem to be this guy that plays AQW, going around making crazy videos, in actuality, there's been someone pulling my strings within the shadows, moving me around like a stronger puppet. Because truthfully, I don't make videos because I play the game. I play the game only when I make videos. And let me tell you, I really love making videos for for this game, for this community, and anyone watching right now. But the time has come, and I have to move on to something a bit newer and take a fresh breath of air. That way, I can keep being me. And just maybe, you'll see me again, making videos for that one game with the 2D art style that ran on Flash. <clears throat> so, now what? It was a cold winter night and the heat from the fire was keeping Eleven warm. Time was catching up to him. You must have came a long way to find me, Traveler. Come, sit by the fire and tell me more about yourself. Don't be shy, have some of my stew. Little did he know, time was closer than he thought. You seem tired, Elevande. Maybe you should lie down. Is this it? Is this the end of my Everything is Wrong series? No, I'm not done yet. You don't get to choose, Elevande. Fine, I'll do it. Ha ha ha, do what exactly? Farm. Where it all started. This is the iconic zone, the Lair of Balsakar, aka the Lair. You'll find colorful themed dragons lurking around with spiky looking swords. Today we're going to farm for the legendary Dragon Slayer class, given to you by Galanoth himself. This is the most basic type of farm out there. It's as simple as... Congratulations, you have won $500 in Applebee's gift cards. Click here to claim now. Things that we'll be asking ourselves will be... What's the value of the gameplay? Does it reward you fairly? Or does it spit on your face? Like one of your favorite Discord kittens that keeps asking for money. From Dragon Fable to Adventure Quest, here you'll find out that Galanoff is a little bit unhinged and wants to kill off all dragon kind. I mean, who does doesn't like committing genocide. Sign me up. Step one, go up the Dragon Slayer ranks by killing draconians in color-coded order, like within a children's Corolla box. Honestly, very inclusive, Galanoth. Once you reach rank Marshal by killing their boss eight times in a row, because once wasn't enough, you can buy these items from this shop. That includes the Fable Dragon Slayer class. This is a very cool way of introducing a new class. The quest line wasn't too long, and the reward being a class gives the players a whole new way of playing the game. But if it wasn't for the class reward, the value would have been zero, as there wasn't really a story tied to this, and the items were member only, with the sword being ACs. Overall, good for its time, but doesn't seem to know what it wants to be, a farm promoting membership or an introduction to Dragon Slayer. You have beaten the red dragon, but can you beat the blue dragon? No, I suppose I haven't. If you are to learn how to farm it, then you must beat the blue dragon. Pelly, literally, death itself is coming for me. Now is not the time for this. Oh, you don't know where to go. Don't worry about it. I'll take you there. Here's the blue dragon. Glad I could help smile. That's Nolga. He's also teal, not blue, or a dragon. What makes you think now's a good time for your shit? I know you're getting sick of me. All my jokes make no sense. And you really don't want this to drag on. <laughs> Please stop calling me randomly when I'm trying to make videos. Anyways, I was like, uh, well, at least I didn't wrap gay bars. Four big guys, and they bust. The most iconic secretive zone, Terces Yugunaglum. Hidden away by secret requirements and guarded by its labyrinth caves, we're taking it to the next level, and we're farming for one of the most beloved and iconic weapons in the game, Ungodly Reavers of Nolgath. That's right, one of the most overused, ugly pieces of shit known to man. I love it. We make our way to Citadel, where we learn that we need 50 bone dust to proceed. Fine, I'll be back. I'll get you 50 bone dust. 
this game. Finally, they let us in. Now we need to find our way through this maze. Nolgath the Archfiend. Before we can start, we need to have three things done before. The first two Chaos Lord stories, and at some point, we need to be level 30. Turn in the final quest at the end of the farm. This is a quest that gives you the weapon. We're gonna be collecting some ingredients. So let's break this down. There are many quests you can do to get said ingredients. Each quest does something better that the other can't, but most of them just give resources, while others give you both resources and items. As a new player, this is going to be very confusing, but not because there's a lot of moving parts. It's because the game doesn't make it clear to the player what quest is better for what, and the huge amounts of menus, and just all the NPC text boxes. We're going to stick to the most basic way of farming ingredients, the quest. Back we go to our good friend Ashirian. He's going to be giving us the Relic of Chaos. This will give pretty much everything we need, but the totems of Nolgath. That's where comes in. It has you kill Makai's, while the other method requires you to kill Toro the Blade Master, a level 75 that can just one-shot you. But once you gather all the pieces to the quest, you need one final part, the undead Bruiser Rune. Kill him once, and like that, a whole day or two has gone by. But at least we have this ugly weapon. This farm was fun, but only in the context of the no. As a new player, this was very hard to complete, because I need a lot of help from older players. But the amount of times that a player has to use the wiki and just straight up watch YouTube guides is a huge turnoff. No one in their right mind would openly farm this. It reminds me a lot of a gacha game, having to strategically use your wallet. You seem tired, Elevande. Do you really have nothing better to do than follow me around? I am the embodiment of all that cease to be. Are you, you truly putting up missing posters? Shouldn't you be farming Nutgoth crap or something? Go away. A little decency goes a long way. Go away, please? <sighs> Walk with me. We have much to discuss. What is it that you think awaits you at the end of all this? Do you even know where we're going? You grind away day after day. I swear we passed that Arby's pain, five times already. Right. those who fail to pursue their true desires. I shall let you ponder this while I grab some lunch. Would you like anything? God, no. And you see, Elevande, that is why I had to reap the soul of that Arby's cashier and the entire school bus full of witnesses. Would you like a child's stuffed dinosaur? I have a whole pile of them now. I appreciate the talk, Death, but I think I'm gonna get going I now. I told that man no cheese. He has ruined my sandwich, so I'm going to ruin your day. That door, Elevande, what if I told you there was a place where those who become servant to their own obsessions gather? A place where everything is harder for no reason, and where you can only matter if you pay your way through. A place where you do the same thing on repeat, even though you never actually want to do it. A place where the world ceases to move beyond six frames a second, and all the monkeys are denied accessibility options. Are you saying I'm going to hell? Worse. Ultra bosses, the hardest, laggiest piece of content the game can offer you. We're going to try to take down the most popular ultra bosses and see what makes them worth the player's time. A while back, I did a vote on what the community's favorite bosses were. Turns out you guys chose Dage the Evil and Dracaf as the best ultra fights. But are they any fun? First off, we have Ultra Dage. You have to have already done a lot of side stories prior to doing this because the quest that gives you the insignias needs to be unlocked. By completing these three quests, after doing that you can finally take on Dage. So what makes this ultra? Is it the overpriced scrolls? Or maybe it's standing on this pad when it glows. That's if the game lets you as the lag is stopping you from moving and healing causes self damage. So that cuts self healing classes from party groups. After killing ultra Dage, you can turn in his weekly quest that gives insignias. Said insignias can be used to get empowered versions of already hard to obtain items. Or you can use the insignias to speed up a process of the other farm. Like the widely used Legion and Revenant class. Now we have Ultra Dracath. There's only one thing you really need for this fight, the overpriced scrolls for taunting. But what can his weekly insignias be used for? Well, there's no real difference in concept like they were before in the last farm. You can get the empowered items and there's a class type to it, but the design for it is way different. Instead of helping you farm for said class, like Legion Revenant, it's now a part of the Ultra farm because you need to do the weekly at least four times, making it no longer optional. Overall, I find this endgame far 
farm be pitiful as most players doing the farm already have something better when doing the farm and are solely doing it to add icing to the cake for their inventory collections this is the case because the barrier to entry is higher than the content itself this content isn't in game it's for the people that want to feel like they have it in game in their favorite game adventure quest worlds well, that's it. That's the video. Now what? I can't make any more AQW videos. Where do I go from here? Follow me. Who is that? You. But I'm me. Plus, I don't wear Hawaiian shirts. Finally, you made it. Not really my style, but I'm sure I'll bank it later. It's AC tagged, right? Um, where did he go? Death? Why am I glowing?